Well, good morning. Uh, it's just after nine o'clock. I'm just getting up and I woke up hungry, which is very unusual for me. So I thought before I do anything, I want to make uh, some breakfast. Of course, I did make coffee already, got that going, but I'm just uh, making some toast here and then I will make a couple of eggs, I think, to go with that. And once that is done, I've got some upgrades to the van I want to do today. This is a bit of a rare occasion that I eat an actual breakfast. Um, this is actually pretty good. Uh, I added some yellow bird to it. This is a jalapeno one. and. Yeah, this is nice. I Maybe I should do this more often. <laughs> it's odd. Uh, I did not do a very good job with my coffee this morning. Um, this coffee that I'm drinking is normally really good, but today it's just kind of mediocre. I don't know what I did wrong, but um, hopefully that's not an omen, a bad omen for the rest of the day. Uh, today what I have planned is uh, van upgrades, but uh, maybe I should call it reorganizing, although I, I am going to need to buy something to do the reorganizing, so that's why I'm thinking of more of it as an upgrade. But uh, let's get off to the store and get started on that. It was a very cool night last night. I think it got down into the low 50s. And one, that means I'm very happy because I sleep really good in those temperatures. Uh, but two, it also means that I have to warm up my van a little bit more. Uh, my transmission has been giving me some issues uh, if I don't really warm it up, especially on these colder mornings. Uh, it just does not want to shift. So I'm going to sit and warm it up here a little bit. And while we're doing that, I'll tell you where I am. Uh, I am in Eureka. And Eureka, of course, is up in Northern California. Uh, we're a couple hours drive just south of the Oregon border. So up here, this is the Pacific Northwest, and I just really like this area. Uh, I'm not like a normal nomad. Of course, I do live in a van and I do travel around a little bit, but I'm not a normal nomad and that I don't zip around the country and have, you know, a new spot that I'm parking in every night. Uh, the way I do it is I try to find a few nice places that I really enjoy being in and I stay there as long as I possibly can and Eureka is definitely one of those places that once I get here I just don't really want to leave I just stay here as long as I can and enjoy every minute of it. We've got a bit of a gray day here that's all right with me I like this kind of weather I've been waiting for some rain though. I want to see some rain and we just have not had much of any rain at all. We've had some little sprinkles here and there but no real rain yet but I'm sure it's on the way. Okay so we are here at Target's and I'm not a person that really likes to shop a whole lot but when I do go in to shop for things that I need, I might walk around a little bit. The other day I found something in Target that really helped organize a little bit of an area in here. Let me show you. So this is the other sliding door that I have on the opposite side of the van. And I've always had this as kind of an extra storage area. It's a kind of prime real estate in a minivan just to take advantage of any extra space that you have. And so since I don't actually use this door, I normally just store some things. So this is my backpack. If I'm gonna be out away from the van for a while, it's plenty big. I can put anything that I need into it. My iPad and some water, like you see, I've got my water bottle here in one of the pockets. And I've always wanted to kind of utilize the space next to it. Uh, and the other day in Target, I found this thing, and this is this is actually sold as a trash can. Uh, it's got a little liner in it, and it was kind of the perfect size to sit next to my backpack, and so I thought I'd give it a try, and it's worked out so well 
that I want to get another one for the back door. So I've opened up the back door to give you a better look at this. Uh, this area I've used just like on the other side of the van. Uh, because it's an open space, I can hang something. And I've been using this bag and it's really not the right size. Uh, plus, I've got it a little overstuffed, much like the other bag. Uh, so today I'm gonna buy another one of those bags and get rid of this bag. I think that that other style is gonna work better over here. And I also need to do a little cleanup too today, I think. This just gets so dirty back here. And since today is all about getting cleaned and organized, I think I'll take a minute and just walk around the store, see if there's anything else I can find that will help me clean up and organize a little bit better while I'm at it today. Uh, nuts. They're stocked in everything except the one that I came in for. Well, that is a bit of a bummer. Uh, I remember thinking as soon as I got that other one in here, got it loaded up and fitted back in the on the wall there, I remember thinking this is perfect and probably would be perfect for the back door. I should go right back in and buy another one. And I didn't. And that was like a week and a half ago. I try not to drive around too much, so I didn't want to drive all the way back down here to get another one. And I was kind of thinking I would buy two and maybe even put a second one on this door. Oh well, um, it's not all bad because uh, I stocked up on baby wipes, which I like to buy there. And I bought some Velcro, which will help me uh, with all of this thing of getting things organized. Uh, and I bought something that I have been wanting for a long time. Uh, I've been looking for a flannel shirt. Maybe the one thing that I would like better about this shirt is if it were just a bit darker of a color. Um, I think it's showing up just a little bit brighter on camera than it actually is in real life, but I would prefer it to be more like my shirts, a little darker gray. But uh, being that it's 100% cotton, and I can wash it and it can go in the dryer. I figured, you know, that was all the things I was looking for in a flannel shirt. So um, happy I finally found a flannel shirt. I can't believe that I could not find a flannel shirt all last year that wasn't 100% cotton. Just kind of crazy. No, actually, I could find some. I did see a few that were 100% cotton, but they were just outrageously expensive. I think they were like $60 and up and I I wasn't gonna pay that this one was 20 that's okay um, I did buy one other thing I bought a little pill box um, I don't take any prescription medication but I do take a bunch of supplements that my doctor has me on I'm not gonna talk about those because uh, prescribed by my doctor just for me so they wouldn't help anybody but me but um, I have been having a little bit of trouble remembering taking them. I've tried to keep the bottles up here on my shelf so that they're kind of in my field of view, but I still don't kind of remember to take them. So I'm hoping that if I get them in the little case here, at least I'll have it somewhere. I'm hoping I can put this somewhere that I'll see it and it'll remind me. And then because it's a clear case, I'll be able to look and see, hey, did I actually take them today? or take them yet today. Uh, so we'll see if this works. I've been thinking about getting one of these for a long time and I have not wanted to, but I am I am now thinking that I, I, I'm gonna need it. I have to have it because I keep forgetting to take the supplements and that's not good. So we'll, uh, we'll wash this up and get it, get it into use. Um, not that I'm, not that I'm bummed out by not finding that other bag, another bag uh, to buy. But I think I could still use a little cheering up. And of course, you know what that means. This morning I was drinking some coffee from Seattle and I'm almost out of that bag. And really, because I'm back here in Humboldt County, I should be drinking some local coffee. So I think I'm gonna crack into the bag that I bought when I was at the food co-op the other day. Uh, this is from Humboldt Bay Roasters. Uh, this is really good coffee, and uh, the cool thing about this one in particular is they, 
uh, hired a local artist to do the artwork on the bag. I thought that that was just going to be a one-time thing, but it looks like they're still using it, although I think it's slightly different from the last bag I bought. But very cool to see the local artist is still getting uh, his artwork put on this really good coffee. So let's open up this bag and we'll have some local coffee today. I forgot how light roasted this uh, Ethiopian coffee is from Humboldt Bay Roasters. Uh, it is very light roasted. Um, I do prefer light roast over everything else, but this is actually kind of right on that edge of being a little too light roasted for me. But I remember really liking this. Uh, I bought this uh, on the recommendation of one of their coffee roasters. I went down to Old Town Eureka here where the roastery is and I talked to one of the roasters and told him what I like in coffee, told him what I had bought from them before in the past, and then he recommended this one. And I am really glad that I uh, asked him for the recommendation, did all that, because this is just super good. Generally speaking, I spend most of my time in cities, uh, larger cities, and uh, I've been trying to get away from that a little bit. Now, Eureka is kind of the perfect size city for me. Um, it is the largest city in Humboldt County, but it's not a large city compared to other cities, of course. Um, so that does make some differences there, like, you know, going into Target and not getting the thing that I needed because it's out of stock. Uh, a lot of the other cities that I hang around in uh, have multiple targets or at least maybe there's a target uh, in the next city over and it's not a big drive to go get something just go to that other target and get what I need um, but around here is a little different uh, this is the only target within a couple of hours drive so I don't have a lot of options here and it's kind of that way with everything here in Eureka which on the one hand it makes it kind of nice um, even though this is the big city of Eureka, uh, it's not a real busy city. It's not, you know, just crazy busy. Like last night where I parked, it was quiet all night long. Um, it wasn't noisy until about 8 o'clock this morning, and that's because uh, there were some roofers putting a new roof on somebody's house just a few houses down the block from where I was parked. Uh, that was the noisiest it got. I could hear their uh, pneumatic nailers going about 8 o'clock. Uh, that was about it, you know. Um, all night long, hardly any traffic on the street, and it's pretty much that way all over here, Eureka. So it kind of, it's kind of the, the perfect city for me. I can get what I need normally, um, things-wise and food-wise, but every once in a while, you don't get what you need, and who knows how long it'll be until Target here uh, restocks because we're kind of kind of an outlier here since there's no other Targets nearby. Oh, this is so good. I'm glad I bought another bag of this. Although I kind of feel like I'm cheating a little bit. Um, when I'm around Tumble here, there are two coffee roasters that I like more than all of the others. Uh, there's a bunch of really good coffee around, but I mean, again, looking at it from what I like to drink. I like light roast stuff, so it kind of uh, thins out the herd of the coffee roasters around town here. Uh, some of them only do dark roast, and so I've tried them. It's just not my thing. Uh, really good coffee is just not my thing. Uh, but uh, of the two companies, my favorite is uh, from a company called Fogline, and everything I buy from them is just incredibly good. So they are my favorite. I always feel like I'm cheating if I'm not drinking Fogline. But I do like to kind of spread around uh, the wealth a little bit. Uh, and Humboldt Bay does make really good coffee. They are a little bit more of a budget option versus Fogline. Fogline is uh, kind of ultra, ultra premium coffee. So it's the best you're ever going to get anywhere. Uh, where Humboldt Bay is just like premium. Uh, you know, nothing wrong with that. But the price difference is pretty big on some of the bags. Um, because Fogline sources their coffee a little bit differently, uh, 
it's always kind of different uh, pricing for their bags. Uh, the last bag I bought from them, I didn't look at the price. I just picked it and bought it and then realized, ooh, that was a little more than I normally like to spend. Um, so that was another reason why I wanted to buy something a little more budget. Mine did, and I'm glad that I did because this is really quite tasty. Okay, this is kind of weird. They say that this is easy open. You press these little tabs and they kind of pop open. This one doesn't work quite as well as the others. Oh well. You never know. Maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't. Well, I'm a little bit bummed that they didn't have that trash bag in stock and that I wasn't able to do the little organizing that I was planning on doing. But since the plans were changed uh, by no fault of my own, I guess that means we can just go do something much more fun and not feel bad about it. Even though I still feel a little bit bad about cheating on my favorite coffee roaster with my second favorite coffee roaster, but uh, I'm also cheating on myself, I guess, for not getting anything organized because that was really the point of today. Although I did get my supplements organized. So let's take that as a win. And that means we can feel good all the way around about just going out to the beach. So I should have mentioned this earlier, but uh, every time I do a video around Eureka, I usually get several people writing comments saying that Eureka is a dangerous place, and it's not. It just is not. Uh, I've spent a lot of time around Eureka for the last couple of years, and I found it to be actually a very safe city. Um, everybody's got their opinion, but uh, if you want to see a little more about uh, how I feel about Eureka, uh, go back and watch my vlog from last week and you'll get a little better sense about how I feel about this town. Uh, but it is why I hang around here and it is one of my happy places because it's just a really nice safe place. Um, although there are some kind of iffy neighborhoods. Uh, but that's about it. It actually feels like it's kind of warming up a little bit, but I think it's only uh, maybe 65. That's it. But uh, it's very nice out right now. Uh, I'm still going to warm up the van because of the whole transmission issue. Uh, I'm trying not to worry about the transmission, but you notice I say I'm trying not to worry about it. It is a concern. very pretty out here in a very unique way. I haven't really seen any place else quite like this. I, I like it out here. And if you think about it, if you visit Eureka, you can take just a short two mile drive out here to Samoa and then tell all your friends and family that you're in Samoa and then they'll be jealous. I'm not exactly crazy about being right underneath the power line. Looking up there, I see somebody lost their kite. It is windy out here. This is a good place to fly a kite, I would imagine, except if you get it caught in a power line. There's a bunch of these little parking areas along this road out here, and I always get confused with all of these as to where is the trail to get over to the water. Uh, there were lots of footsteps here, so I figured this was the right one. Um, but I don't know. Oh, I can see the water, so yeah, this is good. This one is nice because it's a real short walk to the water. Some of these you really got to go up over some hills and uh, through all the sand here. It's kind of hard walking sometimes. I'm not going to lie. Part of the beauty here about this area is that it's just not crowded usually ever. Uh, very few people out here, even in the summertime. Uh, today there's a few people around, but not many at all. And to me, that makes this a little bit more special. Oh, cool, it's lunch. Well, maybe we'll leave it for the birds. I 
think it actually is lunchtime for me, but no seafood. Let's make some enchiladas. Uh, whenever I eat, when I first get up, it always puts me off of my regular schedule. And now I am a hungry, hungry hippo. So I'm gonna have to do this rather quickly. Uh, but enchiladas are actually pretty quick for me to make uh, if I make them the New Mexico style. And I've shown this before. Uh, the one thing I did want to talk about, though, is um, this is much easier now that I have this new pan. So when I went up to Seattle, I bought this uh, Stobe enamel on cast iron pan, and I've really been liking it. Um, in fact, I've been using it a lot more for things uh, that I would normally use my old pan uh, this is a clang, clang, clang. This is a uh, carbon steel pan uh, made by a French company called De Bayer. De Bayer. Take your pick, either one. Uh, but yeah, I really like this pan. Uh, but this has actually become more of my egg pan. I normally just cook eggs in this. Although like last night I cooked a uh, hamburger patty in it and did fine. And, you know, I toasted my toast this morning in it. Uh, but I've been using it less and less for things like that and trying to just keep it as an egg pan. And I'll show you a little more of that once I get to the latter half of the enchilada making. I'm going to whip this together really quickly. And if you want to see how I make enchiladas, maybe you can go to my cooking playlist and look at the enchiladas that I made there. Uh, this is going to be roughly the same. Uh, the one difference that I do now is I make the roux uh, not with flour and oil, but I make the roux uh, with some uh, potato flakes. I just thicken it up with some potato flakes. It works just fine, and I think it's actually a little bit quicker even. Uh, so I'm going to do that before I pass out. Hopefully I don't pass out. Okay, I haven't passed out yet, but I got the sauce together. Um, I don't like my sauce to be too thick and gloopy, so this is, uh, this is pretty much the consistency I'm after. And the great thing about using the potato flake to thicken up the enchilada sauce versus a roux is it's really easy to make a little bit more or to fix the sauce if you need to. Uh, if you're using a roux, which is water and flour and some fat all mixed together, uh, it's a lot harder to, to correct the sauce. Uh, so that's that's the reason that I've switched to the potato flake. And then the rest of the sauce is just some chili powder. And here I've got some uh, New Mexico chili powder and some ancho chili powder. Can you tell that my brain is, is tired and needs food? You probably can. Uh, and then I have some organic vegetable bouillon cubes that I add for a little bit of extra flavor. Sometimes I use uh, some boxed broth. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, sometimes I'll add some tomato to the sauce, which I like better. I just am in a hurry, so I'm going to skip that this time. The trick here is making enough enchilada sauce to cover all of the tortillas that you need uh, without making too much if you're going to make them right in the pan. It might be easier to make the sauce in a different pan, but I've been doing it this way because it's just so easy for cleanup uh, once I'm done. So I've got the, I thought I had this on a simmer, but I do not. There we go. So I've got the pan on a simmer for just a little bit of heat. And then I'm going to just layer up my corn tortillas here with some enchilada sauce and then just stack them up. And I'm just doing these flats because that is uh, the New Mexico style. So my enchiladas are essentially finished. Uh, most of the cheese is melted, uh, so I could eat them right now. But to make these a little bit more filling, I'm going to cook a couple of eggs. I'm going to fry a couple of eggs and toss them on top, uh, which I will do in my other pan. And that's uh, the great thing about keeping this pan as kind of a non-stick egg pan is I know that I can easily make a fried egg. Uh, you may have noticed this morning when I cooked my scrambled eggs, they just slid right out of the pan. Uh, it's been pretty nice to have a pan 
like that that is basically a non-stick pan even though there is nothing non-stick about this this is just a plain old carbon steel pan but while i wait for that to heat up i'll just cover up my enchiladas and having them covered up like this will uh, not only keep them hot but finish melting off the rest of the cheese this stays hot for quite a little while so i don't have to rush with this although i am rushing a little bit because i am hungry Hopefully I didn't overcook these, but obviously they slid right out, no problem. Uh, I am gonna put a little yellow bird on this too because yellow bird always makes everything better and it'll help season up the eggs a little bit more. That's it. The great thing about this is I can eat directly out of this pan and it makes cleanup a little bit faster and easier. So this is not only a really quick dish to put together, but it's actually quick to clean up and be done. So this is a, this has been really good. I wasn't too sure when I bought this pan if it was really the right pan for me to buy. It's expensive. Uh, it was on sale when I bought it, but it's still expensive. So I wasn't real sure about it, but I'm sold on it now. And I really like the fact that it's just really versatile, uh, especially the fact that I can eat directly out of it makes it especially versatile. Uh, the one thing is that it is a little hard to kind of dig the food out of it. Um, I may have been better off with a more shallow pan. Like uh, they have one that's more like this. It has more this shape, which might be easier to eat out of. Uh, but I kind of like this pan and that it's a little bit different than my carbon steel pan. Uh, so I can do some different, cook some different things in this pan versus the carbon steel pan. And by the way, there is something just so special about the runny egg yolk with the enchilada sauce. Uh, just fantastic. Um, I would kind of like some finely shredded cabbage and maybe some cilantro. Yes, I, I do like cilantro. That would make this better, but I don't have any right now, so this is good enough for me. And, you know, the yellow bird adds a little bit of extra zing to this too. Oh, by the way, uh, speaking of yellow bird, uh, this company here, if you're not familiar with them, um, I used to have a coupon code that I would give out for people to order directly from the company and they stopped doing that and uh, they did tell us that they were going to do some special things and so they'd be back in touch with us uh, in the future and the other day they sent me an email telling me that they wanted to send me some free hot sauce and I emailed them back and told them that it's just not a good time for me to get mail right now. I just don't have a really good uh, way of getting mail at the moment. And they emailed me right back and said, hey, no problem. Whenever you want free hot sauce, just let us know and we'll mail it to you anywhere, uh, which I thought was really cool. They're just such a cool company. You know, not only do they make really good hot sauce, but I just think they're really good people and they run their company really well. So I just thought I'd mention that. I don't know if I'm supposed to mention that or not, uh, but I am because I think that they're an awesome company and awesome people. And so uh, I just want to get the word out that I eat this hot sauce, not just because I like it, but because I want to support the company. And yes, I will be buying it for myself uh, because it's just a little difficult to get mail at the moment, but just cool. Very cool company. Yes, the kettle is back on. And while I'm waiting for the water to boil, uh, the stove here has been something that I want to upgrade uh, to. Now, I know I didn't get the other upgrades done, but that'll be easy once uh, Target restocks. The thing that I need, I can just go and get that and that'll be finished. But this upgrade might be a little bit more difficult and I've been putting it off for, well, a reason that'll be obvious in a moment. So this stove I bought from Home Depot's website, it was uh, just under $25 if I bought it from their website and then I just had it shipped to a Home Depot where I was. Um, if you're interested in this stove and you 
don't want to shop at Home Depot, you can get the same stove on Amazon for $65 last I checked. Anyway, I did make some changes to this stove. Um, I changed the legs on it. I took the legs that came with it and threw those out and uh, put these uh, bolts in for feet because I wanted to be able to adjust the angle of the stove. So because I'm always parked on a city street normally, uh, the van is usually kind of tipped in this direction. So I, I can easily just uh, screw these up and just angle the stove up a little bit to make up for that uh, curve of the road. And it's worked out really good, except that uh, the big mistake that I made is having four feet that you have to level makes it really difficult to get it level. Uh, if it had three feet, like a tripod, it would be, I think, more stable and actually quicker and easier to level it out. So the only reason why I haven't wanted to make a change with this is I store my pans right behind the stove. And this makes a really good spot for this pan. And if I didn't have this spot, I don't know where I'd put this pan. I, I wouldn't really have a safe place to put it. Uh, it stays put because I've got some magnets uh, that it just sticks to. Uh, surprisingly, the heat hasn't demagnetized the magnets. I thought that that would be a problem, but it hasn't been a problem. Uh, but the, you know, the issue I have with making any changes to the feet with this is that if I do anything, I'm going to lose my storage spot. So it's something I've been kind of contemplating and I'm not really sure what to do about that yet. Um, if I could work out another place to put the pan and have a safe spot for it that I knew it wasn't going to fly around if I say slam on my brakes, uh, then I would maybe drill a hole on the back side of the stove here and put the one of the feet there. Um, so if you've thought about doing a stove like this and copying my you know what I I forgot to turn my timer on I've got my timer here and I forgot to turn it on okay there we go um, I've got premium coffee here so I need to take some steps to try to make sure that I don't mess it up uh, that's why I'm uh, fretting over that um, anyway uh, so yeah I I think if you want to try to copy this, I think you'd be better off doing three feet instead of four, just because it, it is kind of a hassle to get it level uh, in some spots. There's some spots that, you know, the van is tipped forward or aft uh, as well as from side to side. And so in those cases, I've had a little bit of trouble just leveling it out. Um, it's working, but it's one of those things that just could be better. Did I happen to mention that it is a little cooler out here than it was in town? Uh, maybe that goes without saying since we're over near the water, but uh, it's now starting to feel kind of chilly almost. Uh, the sun's starting to set and the temperature is really different, uh, but I am not going to put a sweater or jacket on. I'm going to enjoy the coolness. Uh, I do want to walk back out to the water though, I think, so let me grab my coffee and we'll go back out and enjoy the waves for a few minutes. I don't know what this plant is that has this kind of red tinge to it. Some of it gets really red. I don't know if that changes by the season or not, but it's just really pretty, I think. Um, it's. Uh, it must be some kind of succulent, I would imagine, because of the way it looks, but I really don't know what it is. I'm not good with plants and stuff, but I just always like the look of it. Oh, here's some that's a little more red-tinged. I don't know if I recorded this earlier or not, but it's just got such a beautiful look to it. There's a lot of this around up and down this beach here. I don't think it gets much better than this. This is just awesome out here. 
Uh, this is one of the reasons that I like Eureka so much. Uh, sometimes if I'm in a place, I wish that I was closer to the ocean, or sometimes if I am at the ocean, I wish that I was near some trees. But with Eureka, you've got both, and uh, it's just a few minutes away, no matter where you are in the city, you've got either trees or beach like this. It's just awesome around here. Plus the fact that Eureka is such a safe city. Uh, you know, I live out of a van and everything that I own is in this van. And so I've been gravitating more to safer places and trying to stay away from places that I'm just unsure about or obviously places that are not quite so safe. So that's why I spend so much time around Eureka. It's just, I know it's a safe place. I know I'm not gonna have trouble here. And with this kind of environment, it just draws me back. And when I get here, I don't wanna leave ever. But of course I will have to leave at some point. Uh, and there is the fact that I do get antsy and wanna just get to a new place. It's part of living out of a van as you can move around a little bit. And even times when I don't need to move, I start to feel like maybe I should be moving. I'm not saying I feel that now, but it is something that happens eventually. Right now, I'm pretty happy to be here. I think it's about time for me to call it a day. Uh, I didn't get much done today, so I have a few extra things to put back on the list. Oh well, uh, that's the way things go sometimes. But uh, I'm going to get back into Eureka, find a place to park for tonight. Maybe tomorrow will be a more productive day, but uh, in any case, today was not a bad day at all. And hopefully tomorrow will be a little bit like today is. Uh, if I'm lucky anyway. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it.